Are we starting with something, or do you want to just have a freewheeling conversation about failure? Maybe we you should start with your... Oh, should we talk about where we are? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, the building behind us was destroyed in a bomb explosion in 1970 by failed uh, revolutionary activists, although some would not call them activists anymore, right, with bombs. Let's call them activists. Um, uh, who uh, were building bombs in the basement and and blew themselves up, uh, destroying the building. Two people escaped and um, were on the lam. And um, I was I was wondering if it was important to you know name who you know or not name, oh, okay. um, but you know just sort of keeping things very general. Um, but 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 indeed it's. It was a particular group that failed, right? Um, and I'm uh, I'm kind of interested in this location as a sort of monument to failure of you know revolution or expected revolution. You know, here we are in a very uh, polished and expensive neighborhood um, with this memorial to the people who are fighting against exactly those. Uh, uh, Properties of of capitalism and and uh, you know what the you know, right 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 so and here we have it now in this state of disrepair because it's just been purchased for near ten million dollars or something like that so it's a pretty pretty extraordinary place to sit and ponder you know ones and ones groups failures <laughs> so and that was one of the things that I you know thought was interesting, because as a group, we've done some interesting projects and also some interesting failures, which I think are just as important as a group. So that's where I wanted to start this conversation. Okay. So to bring it back to us, you know, because everything comes back to the self, right? So. And um, in a sense, the name kind of gives us a huge latitude for for what might be considered failure. You know, because like, well, the Institute for Wishful Thinking, so, well, you know, we didn't really expect to do that, right. you know. Uh, so, in that sense, it's, uh, you know, we were, we're self-deluded from the start, and we admit it. Coming from, whether it's the 60s, 70s, or 80s, where there's, there's a lot of space and a lot of creative uh, seeming potential in the city for groups such as ours to sort of now look back and think about that compared to now. I mean, are we doomed to failure? Was that time period doomed to failure? I guess the question is, you know, are, is New York like on on some sort of downward slide and are people going to start going somewhere else? Have they already started going other places? I guess they they have, right? Um, I mean, what's it what's it like in Harlem where you're working, Susan? I'd say it's kind of, I was just thinking of that. It's sort of like maybe, I mean, it's already not in that stage it was here in the 60s. It's already past that again, and it will continue to gentrify, I think, until it changes and looks kind of like this. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Where do where do people go next? I don't know. And I guess, and I guess, what do you do? You, I mean, I guess on the terms of failure, is that just um, you know, where that path goes and how you, do you call that success? Some people would call that success. Some people would mm -hmm. call That's that right. failure. So That's I guess right. I think that definition is so um, different for whoever you're talking to that it's hard to put any, you know, it's hard to define that in a way that everyone would agree. And, you know, in the same way that this was a failure in that mm -hmm. it exploded, two people died, um, it was it was kind of the end of the movement, it you know, which was already. And you know, in the same way that that the radical movement in Italy, uh, which which was so much more successful than uh, for a time than, than than the radical movement here in terms of actually having having an impact mm -hmm. on people's lives and and making making change in, in policy, um, that movement was also crushed because some of the some people were killed. It, <laughs> I hate to, you know, get sort of morbid about it, but you know, it's like so we do keep 
you're you're not really a failure until you're dead and and maybe and maybe then you're not even a failure because because people get you know discovered and things work that you do has just occurs to me you both have children right um and i don't um i mean is that sort of uh i mean i don't even understand the impulse to have children personally even though i realize i wouldn't be here if if other people hadn't had the impulse uh <laughs> a huge spread of people had the impulse to generate you right that's right that's right so but it but it does seem like having children is a is a kind of a a move towards maybe not maybe it's not success but yeah, what is it i don't know what and you never know when that stops. It could be, you know, 300 years from now. So I suppose there's always potential. But there's always potential behind any failure, I would say, or any. You, your kid could always turn out to go and shoot up a school, you know. And not to say that I'm wishing yours or mine ever would, but, you know, would that be a success in that point or a failure? You know, I, I, honestly, I think it's interesting to think of – should I hold this for a second? Okay. Um, to think of um, the idea of not having children as a success of a culture. Because here we have, like, brought people to the point of just feeling completely comfortable without having to follow their animal instincts of reproduction. You know, you look around at the birds or whatever, and there they are every spring making baby birds, and that's nature. But, like, here we are supposedly something that's a little more than that, right? And, and so I, I always find it very interesting to think about, uh, you know, the end of lineages that are genetic and the beginning of lineages that are um, something else, you know, because I think there's this idea of knowledge that's being created and passed as something that's just as generative as, as, a, as a life, you know. So, so it's interesting to think, you know, if you could dedicate yourself to creating ideas instead of kids, I mean, everybody can make a kid, you know. So, so I, I don't think of, and, you know, a, a lot of artists, honestly, who are successful don't have kids because they, they can dedicate their time to pursuing that success, which is, is that a failure? You know, it's a very interesting thing to think about. You know, my grandma would think it's a failure, of course, you know, because her va values are very different. So maybe it's a value system. <clears throat> so in the eyes of the Institu Institute for Wishful Thinking, is there such thing as a failure? Yes, I guess maybe there could be, um, like, a failure of values. Mm -hmm that you know if um if if a if a project uh or or even people involved in a project somehow you know got treated badly or or something was inconsistent with you know because i mean the idea of the institute for wishful thinking <clears throat> doesn't necessarily imply the values um that that at least, I mean, I feel like we all agree on. Another failure might be um, figuring out how to collaborate because it's about, you know, this other project of mine, which is personnel, which was about going into the workplace and and trying to create more a more democratic kind of situation there. Um, and that involved interviewing whoever would be willing to be interviewed by me to talk about what it was like in the workplace. And um, at least for me, the Institute for Wishful Thinking came out of that uh, because that process of going into somebody's workplace or an institution's workplace would often make people feel kind of nervous and, and defensive and oh, you're coming in, you're going to ask questions, you're going to be a troublemaker, whereas coming in to an institution, which is where we all came together around the uh, the biennial in, in uh, Romania, um, rather than going in to explore the, the, the back story of the biennial and the people who worked for it, instead, we offered them wishes. So, so they get to critique themselves in a sense or say what they what they need or what they want without necessarily 
framing it in a negative way. It does feel a bit like a failure. Hmm. To just have it sitting there. To have it in, not having, I, I do sometimes. Yeah. Not having done, you know, not having done anything with some of it. I guess in my own personal practice, I'm very interested in the failure of images. You know, we, we have so many images in our lives, and we really, I think, lead an image-based, you know, in our heads life. Um, that, that that I'm interested in those moments where it, it, it destroys itself. You know, the, this the set of images becomes overwhelming in our head and just crumbles. Or um, and how to sort of um, make that into something that that we want, you know, to see and 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 not have control over. How to make the failure of images? Yeah. Something. Yeah. That that we see as as a good thing. Absolutely, absolutely, because it it's overwhelmed us at this point. I mean, we're here in the 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 wave has crested in, and we're in the whitewash of you know this sort of media age. We're just tumbled constantly with the screens we have in our pockets, and you know, uh, increasingly on the streets and and in the subway stations. You know, it's this Blade Runner future of of screens that you know are constantly trying to get our attention. My work is very process oriented and I think it I think it is primarily about failure. I mean it's most of the time what I do fails to me. But then it's always even though it's failed and it's sitting aside like your videos of people talking, I always think of it as something that's in the background maybe waiting to happen. So um you know, I don't know, maybe like the definition of the book is failure that ends a um, branch and the branch doesn't go any further. But I always think, you know, maybe that branch just needs to be pruned back and it will grow later. So I don't ever, um, it, I don't really see it um, as something ending. In the zeitgeist, that, that's changed very recently, too, in the last five years, ten years maybe, where all of a sudden things seem impossible that once seemed possible. And, <clears throat> and... You know, the, those who have have that much more and can really decide who has space to participate. So, you know, I, I, I do think that I'm a little idealist in my view that the galleries and museums aren't influencing artists because that's what we see, too. You know, so I'd like to think that we're all working independently, but it's interesting to see how things that show up in in a gallery or in a museum show up in other people's work that I see or in my own work and I find that to amalgam to be fascinating to, to play in and I, I, you know splash around in, in that sense of failure or do we, do we desire some sort of roughness to, to rub again or who do we complain to <laughs> right isn't that an interesting thing to think about you know now point that lens at yourself right that you've been pointing at the you know these people that we expect to have particular responses to that that you could understand you know because they work with people that are incompatible or something but here we are in a position of privilege where we can choose who we want to work with and how and when in that sense so i wonder if we could if we could do that project on ourselves and come up with some answers of you know helping ourselves look for our own wishes